agree, but, yeah. but, but it's certainly April. Well, why not release the um, email so there's no issue? I'd like to open up a continuation of a public hearing on uh, changes to King Street scheduled for 7 p.m. Uh, this is a continuation of a joint meeting that we had uh, with uh, the City um, Ordinance Committee. They have continued their meeting to this Monday. So Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday because it's a random day. Okay. It's not very usual. Meeting. So they're going to continue. They continue to their meeting on Tuesday, and they will be doing their decision-making process uh, that day. We have the planning board that continues tonight. We're going to continue uh, our process tonight. Um, as part of the King Street um, zoning that we're looking for, we have to finish up tonight. One is the map change for central business. We're going to, we have to vote on the expansion of the central business um, down King Street. We have to vote on the entranceway business and we have to vote on uh, the King Street. So really we have three parts to King Street. Uh, at the last meeting, the way we did it was uh, kind of withdrew one at a time. Uh, we didn't vote. Uh, so I think, Carolyn, should we do one at a time again, do central business, do a central business in King Street, but save the voting to the end? Or um, do the voting? Yeah, vote? or you could... Um, I think go through each one and then maybe go back through and see if there are any final issues or whatever and then take them by section so the map change it for the expansion of central business. We'll do that first. And then it, yeah, and then just maybe move up the corridor. And but do we have to wait a second? Yeah. We'll take a vote after each part. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. do we have to close, we can close the public hearing? Because the public hearing is open for all of them right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, you can close it at any point that you feel is appropriate. Not to take but will we close the public hearing for each individual piece? We would keep it open. Just for, keep it open. And then close it all at once. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so the first one, let's do the map change for central business. Yeah, maybe I should just go over a quick summary, sort of, because there are people here that weren't here last time. Sure. And I'll just run through. Um, um, so again, the zoning package for King Street um, addresses the corridor essentially from Main Street downtown all the way up to um, the River Valley Market. Um, and we went over the history um, at the last um, hearing, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but basically this takes us back essentially to 2002 when the Highwood Business District zone changes were made, but it just addressed retail standards. And um, there's been sort of this um, movement since then to sort of re-look at King Street and the zoning and address a broader set of issues for the corridor, not just in the Highway Business District, but the entire thing. Um, and so there were a series of events that took place um, over the years and particularly sort of heated up in, November, in 2009. And there's been a concerted effort since 2009 up to um, this um, spring where you all as a planning board did your final rec uh, recommendations for an ordinance change and submitted that um, to city council, which is what's in front of you for discussion. Um, so again, we talked um, last time that, about changes to central business boundary. Um, in the lower part of the screen um, is, uh, this is Trumbull um, down here. Um, and so this is all currently general business and a little bit of urban residential C, which is um, the church building here and a couple of units here. So the proposal is to expand the central business boundary up to the um, North Street intersection here. Um, again, it's, it's for the most part, it's general um, business with a couple blocks of urban residential C. Um, there was a lot of discussion about whether two stories should be mandatory in this section. And so Central Business essentially addresses that because um, there were, there's a 30-foot height, um, minimum height requirement um, for new construction. Um, the next section um, is, is going from North Street. Again, there's uh, Dunkin' Donuts is below this line in the Central Business proposed change. Um, and this is the old... Um, Honda site here, the rail trail runs along this side. Um, so 
So this yellow area essentially is a highway business zone now, and um, the proposal is to create a new zoning classification um, that's um, based on the general business platform. Um, and that the idea behind this is that this is really, you have a lot of um, dense neighborhoods in this area. You've got the rail trail connection, which can bring, that sort of expands the, the realm of where people can get to King Street by bicycle and by foot. Um, and going across the other way, the rail trail continues, so there's a lot of accessibility in this area and more pedestrian activity. So the idea is really to take this area, there is, um, um, this is where you're starting to see more vehicle trips in this area, but um, focus on this as the next phase for really intense development, um, buildings up to the street, multi-story is the goal, but it's not mandated, um, but the, um, really the way that buildings address the street is the, is the goal here, and also have access both from the rail <coughs> and the sidewalk. Um, Um, right, so the, the, the active rail line is also um, here as well. Um, this, the other um, change in this area in um, rezoning it from highway business to entranceway business is sort of what we're calling the public investment into the infrastructure and um, sort of creating this partnership with development as an inducement to building buildings up close to the street is the traffic mitigation fees are the same as they would be, or zero as they would be in general business in this area. Um, and that's um, sort of seen as the incentive to, to get developers to build in a way they might not, might otherwise not want to build, especially in this large parcel here. Um, there, there, in this area are also new buffer requirements along the street. Um, Single story is allowed, but um, design standards would be applicable to all uses. Uh, no parking is allowed between the street and building. It could be on the side, but that's also like general, the general business district, so it really takes off from that point. And it's really seen as a transition between the areas north, which we're getting to next. Um, it's the rail trail and the substation here. Um, Taco Bell is just north of that. Um, so, um, again, access from the sidewalk and the rail trail is, is sort of seen as crucial and key in this area. <laughs> um, the proposed changes then from the next section, the rail trail to the River Valley Market, uh, is treated slightly differently. Again, it's highway business now. The goal is to, or the idea is to keep it highway business, but make changes so that design standards apply to all uses and not just retail as the 2002 zoning um, changes um, addressed. And really address the, 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 um, the aesthetic qualities along the corridor as well as the pedestrian and bicycle amenities um, along the corridor. In this area is where the vehicles um, accounts for traffic are much, much higher in this section of King Street. And what that does is, with those vehicle counts, that really drives up the land costs um, and um, then puts the, the development potential out of more of the smaller, locally owned kind of um, operations to those developers who really have the multinational or national um, development um, capacity uh, to um, pay for those high rents and high land costs. Um, and so because of that, uh, it's really necessary, what we've um, determined from our research, that the um, developers of that caliber are not going to take big risks, particularly in this market, in developing um, in a market like Northampton with buildings that don't have parking in front and that are multi-story for the most part. And it really takes a public-private investment, public investment particularly in the infrastructure to support um, changes that might happen on the private side of the corridor. Um, 
So again, going back to the map change for the entrance boy business, um, you all talked about for a while the, the idea that the area south of the rail trail is sort of the next incremental step to try to push for that um, more intense development that is uh, maximizes the site in terms of building location. And the changes to the highway business are really about um, focusing on the site functionality and improved pedestrian safety, creating buffers. Uh, I don't know if this picture comes up very well, but flanking the, pu the public sidewalk along the street so that you have that safety between the sidewalk and any parking, and then the sidewalk and the street so that it, it is more of a, it creates more of a comfort zone for people who are accessing King Street other than by automobile. Uh, other changes uh, from the 2002 zoning, the maximum setback that was established at that point at 55 feet is, is eliminated. Uh, that was cause for um, a great concern during this whole discussion about changes to the zoning in terms of um, not providing enough flexibility for, for developers. And really what it establishes is by having a setback, developers are more inclined to follow um, state statute in allowing pre-existing non-conforming structures to continue as they are instead of getting a lot of reinvestment and building that's more consistent with the zoning in order to avoid that maximum setback. They just would tend to reuse buildings and not really um, address any of those other um, non-conforming aspects. The other um, new aspect of the zoning is to create, again, pedestrian and bicycle friendly access points from King Street to the actual development site. So the idea is to create a pedestrian path that's um, um, safely um, accesses the site. So if you're walking on King Street and you want to get to a shop or a restaurant, um, you would have um, a facility to do that without feeling like you had to compete with cars that are crossing big seas of parking lot and asphalt. Uh, again, as we discussed, a dense buffer between the street and the parking lot, and this is sort of a graphic showing the layout based on the Nelson Nygaard um, study of King Street of how that might look. And again, this is many, many years into the future and over um, public investment as well as private investment into the private side of the land, but also the public infrastructure. And another big key thing was to allow more uses by right. We have a lot of special permits that um, are viewed as impediments to developers who are wanting to invest but are concerned they might not get those permits. <coughs> Things that we want to have happen on King Street but are currently now um, have those barriers. And as I mentioned before, design um, characteristics or, or requirements that would be uh, required by all users and not just retail uses. Um, so I don't know, there have been, the other piece of the hearing last time was um, we talked a little bit about possible changes that um, needed, to, either needed to be addressed because there were um, conflicts in the, in the draft that um, uh, were inadvertently left out, but also things that came up in the public hearing that might be addressed. So with that, I submitted that in a staff report, and I have a list here of, I don't know if that's, the text is really small, but, um, so I don't know if you want to go over those one by one or take public comments, but we talked, one of the big things I want to mention is, going back to 2002, there was a 90,000 square foot cap on retail establishments. That was never intended to be left out, but in going through all these changes, um, we realized that that one item is left out. So that is necessary for you to vote on in terms of the recommendation to make sure that gets amended back into the final um, ordinance package that goes to city council. Um, there was discussion last time about clarifying language for drive-through establishments and um, that uh, there's a special permit process in certain districts, the general business and the central business and the entranceway business um, that need to be clarified. And we discussed that a little bit. Um, and then edits related to the cycle track uh, provisions 
and clarify really that the cycle track concept is, is for further discussion in the interest in a street corridor, but it's not intended to be, um, we're not intending for cycle tracks to be the term used on property, you know, when you get to the private side off of the street. And I know these are details that some, that um, we didn't necessarily get into a lot of detail during the public comment because this ordinance is so vast and contains so much information that sometimes it's hard to explain all of those things. Um, and we talked a little bit about the changes to the design standards. Again, tweaking them to clarify, but adding um, um, incentives in the highway business district for low impact develop design standards for stormwater maintenance and trying to encourage people to implement those and so maybe we would reduce the sidewalk widths um, in the highway business district if someone shows that um, they're doing that. There's, there's another option on the table to also allow a reduction of that sidewalk width if you're, uh, or buffer width, I'm sorry, um, landscape buffer width uh, for creating multi-use path that runs through your property that's wider than the six foot minimum requirement. And then the, the glazing standards that we talked about last time too, those are all sort of on the table for you to formally make recommendations on. <clears throat> you mean you want, uh, when, we, when we do a vote, do we have to make the motion with these changes? Yes. Because at the last meeting, they weren't even Right. Well, because they weren't, they aren't part of the ordinance package that was formally introduced to City Council. So oh, City Council has one us. packet, and then these have come along since that one. So they have to be officially recommended as, as modifications. Okay. And now the other thing on the staff report were the uh, issues that Terry had brought up. Uh, Terry Anderson. Right. Do you want to talk about those now, or do you want to? Um, some of them are in these. Mm -hmm. um, recommended changes. There was one, um, so we can talk about those now, we can talk about them. I think for the most part they've been addressed already in these changes. The one about the lighting standards in the entranceway business, um, there was a recommendation that Terry made to have the light poles um, be allowed to be 25 feet high instead of um, it's 16 feet. And um, the reason, um, the rationale behind that request is that the higher the poles, you don't need to put so many on the site. Um, but if you look at it from the other perspective, 25 foot high poles for buildings that are really only 20 feet tall um, are sort of out of scale with, with the idea of that zoning classification and, and also the idea of oh, um, trying to have <coughs> less lighting impact in that area that's closer to neighborhoods and, and really focus the lights on the pedestrian paths. And so you, you can accommodate fewer lights at, at lower levels um, with that standard. It's more of a pedestrian scale. I think that's the only one that um, OPD staff would recommend not adjusting. So um, of the five that are listed here, the first four have been incorporated. So in, <clears throat> in our voting, if we decide to move this forward, these four can be covered if we say to, to, to vote right. with those changes. Right. The fifth one, and we can discuss it. Uh, I think I agree with Carol with the 25 foot high light poles in the area of the building is a little, not what we want. So, unless anyone else has a... I yeah, strongly yeah. agree. Okay. Yeah. Could you just remind me what neck down means? I didn't remember that phrase. It's just a, um, two. It just refers to the... Um, area where, and we, and we probably need to talk about this in more detail, and you may want to take public comment before we go into that level of detail, but it, it really means a narrowing of the street. So you might have a, so this, in this particular case, um, there's the design and the design standards, which I can flip to on the screen as well, show within a parking lot, you typically have a 24 foot wide drive aisle so cars can pass each other safely. But where you have a sidewalk crossing, the idea is to narrow that automobile traffic flow so that there's a forced slowing of cars wherever there's a sidewalk crossing um, so that the pedestrians essentially get the, the right of way um, and the cars know that. 
And the idea, the, the design really is about, then the question was about necking down to 20, um, um, instead of going down to 18 feet, allowing a 20 foot um, dimension. The design was really about having mountable um, cobbled curbs so that if you, if cars needed that extra width, they could, but you would be going very slowly. So there, it would reduce the conflicts to pedestrian. Um, what we do is, if there's any questions for the board before we open up the public comment, any other questions? Uh, so what we do is we don't. Have, well, the, so the public hearing is still open. We can take public comment on all three phases: the map change, central state business, and highway business, and then we can decide how we're going to proceed after the public comment. That's okay. So if anybody from the public would like to comment on um, any of the three pieces. Um, Bill, you had your hand up first. Or? I'm Bill Dwight. I live at 39 Mill Street. I uh, came to last time, to, and I'll reiterate that um, I endorse the process. I endorse nine tenths of this. I actually, I won't even put a fraction on it. Um, the, uh, the concern that I expressed before, of course, was safe access for abutting neighborhoods. Um, in relative to the public-private investment, that clearly we're trying to invest money, public money, to attract businesses to come into town and hopefully generate revenue. But the problem is, and, and those businesses are hoping to attract customers from a variety of areas, but the weird thing is, the way it's set up, they're going to attract customers for everywhere but the abutting neighbors. It'd be, it's actually access to these systems will be easier for people coming from Greenfield by their car than people from Hampshire Heights by foot. Um, and this is, you know, and this isn't a new frustration for me. I was dealing with this when we were discussing it back in 2002. It was, and it was difficult because we didn't, our outreach was not particularly successful into the neighborhoods that I'm describing. So we, you know, I, I owe my failure on that too. So the fact is the fact that I didn't succeed and the fact that subsequent attempts didn't succeed doesn't mean that we should not consider the, the and particularly the, the neighborhoods that are there that are basically isolated islands surrounded by traffic system. River Run Apartments actually, uh, uh, Mary Cowley will be speaking, described it as, is, difficult as crossing the river just trying to get to any system that is beyond their driveway. Um, crossing Damon Road to get to the Pride gas station, for instance, is, is very, it's, well, anyone who's driven down Damon Road can understand why that would be a problem. Um, there, and uh, Carolyn was, was gracious enough to come to a couple meetings with a group called Families with Power at Jackson Street School, um, uh, representing parents of children in Jackson Street School, Bridge Street School, and other, and expanding into other school systems, talking about issues more relative to the school, but it's an organization that actually um, and is empowering people within the community that have yet to be heard from. Um, I'm glad to say that uh, some of those folks are here tonight to speak to this issue. And you print in, in, you know, and the problem is, is of course, it's not really germane to the quarter as we describe it, and a quarter is an apt description because it is essentially a quarter that runs from downtown all the way to River Valley Market and then back also from the 91 entrance. There's no tendrils. I have a built-in tendril. I have access. I live on Myrtle Street. I can literally crawl down my sidewalk to get to any of the systems on King Street and walk at what will soon be a pedestrian crossing section. That is not true, as we said of the hundreds of people who live in these, in these systems. So, um, so in that they don't, some of the issues that we're talking about aren't necessarily speaking directly to the design plans and the aesthetic or anything else. It does speak to the, the organic whole, the holistic system, which I think really obviously is part of the consideration should be. And I don't know the mechanism or the device that could be employed, even particularly in this zoning, that would help obviate the, the challenges. But one of the things that, and I don't even know this could apply, but one of the things that we did when we negotiated uh, for Walmart to come in was they paid mitigation fees. 
mitigation fees to help fund a redesign plan that may actually see fruition uh, uh, for Hatfield Street's juncture at King Street. And I think since the city's public investment is probably challenged and not likely to, to be robust, that, and I understand I don't want to serve as a terrifying impediment to developers, but I think that developers, since they're pitching woo to customers, they have some obligation to help facilitate access for customers. So with that, I'll finish my comments and then, mm -hmm. uh, and then let you hear from the other folks. Sure. Thanks. Just one note, um, uh, Phil, you mentioned um, the, the money we got from Walmart. Um, we called that the group that's going to redevelop the price chopper. Yeah. The price chopper, uh, part of what we negotiated with them is the traffic signal in front of Blue Bonnet at that signal, at that entrance to the four-way crosswalk. So that's part of the things that we're, we've been doing since Walmart. But on King Street, as we do development on King Street, use that money to make it easier. Right. So it would be a condition of permit? It's already yes, the permit's already granted. That's the no, no, but I mean condition for future permits. Oh, yeah, so we do that. So right, so when, when, every when, when permit we get on King Street, right. the well, I mean, goes to helping. Yeah, it obviously be of critical importance when uh, when and if Cole Morgan flips. Right, right. Well, that's particularly what I'm talking about here. Okay, thanks. Hi, um, my name's Gwen Agnes. Um, resident of Northampton and also the principal of Jackson Street School. And I'm here as a representative of our school community. Um, and we at Jackson Street pride ourselves on being a pedestrian friendly school. We've done a lot of work and appealed to both the city and our state to do a lot of improvements in front of Jackson Street and the bike path. And we do have the most walkers and riders to school, so we really value that aspect of getting to and from school. And we also recognize that many of our students and their families live within walking distance of, of the school. And they um, have difficulty some many times in having access to some of the King Street offerings that are there, partly because of the difficulty in crossing King Street, trying to get to the other side, as well as access from Hampshire Heights down to King Street. When I became principal 15 years ago, a student was killed riding from Hampshire Heights to what was then Surview. Um, he just was riding his bike and went right into the path of a car turning in. And I know that it's been improved since CBS built the access there, but it is something that does frighten us on a daily basis to think about the students and their families spending time on their feet or on their wheels getting to and from. And the other thing that I'm concerned about is that we do have a lot of families who live in River Run and they do get bus to our school, the students do, because they are second language learners and we have the program for the district. However, their families have very little access to our school for all the activities that we invite families to come to. So because often they do not have cars, and we, so we have open house and we have lots of activities that we want families to come to and they really can't get there because there's, it's not a safe way to get to school if you have to walk. Um, so I would just echo what Bill has said, that the corridor is great and we would just love to have the perpendicular, if possible, if, so that there's safety on Bridge Road and on Damon Road especially for the students and their families to get to and from all this wonderful new stuff and even just what we have already. Thank you. Is there somebody else in the back? Hello. Uh, my name is Mary Cowie, and um, I live at 29 Laurel Park. I'm an organizer with Families with Power and a teacher at Jackson Street School. Um, I've lived in Northampton for 18 years, all of those years either on or very close to King Street, an apartment on King Street, and then for many years at Hampton Gardens and now at Laurel Park. So I've always lived on King Street in Northampton. Um, my family walks and bikes as much as possible, and for many of my uh, earliest years in Northampton when I was very low income, I did not have a car. 
and I got everywhere with my son by bike, by stroller, by sled. Um, that was how we got around. Um, in in uh, in 2010, as I was bicycling with my daughter to school, I had a very bad bicycle accident on King Street, right in front of Walmart. Um, and so uh, I come here tonight, especially with concerns about. Um, access and safety for bicyclists and pedestrians. I feel very strongly that, you know, I'm in support of development on King Street, but I feel that it really needs to benefit everyone. And um, we need to not just think about how people from other neighborhoods will be able to get in and out to support all of those businesses, but particularly about how the people in the neighborhood who are going to be you know, breathing all that extra exhaust from all that traffic that's coming to the neighborhood, people who live there really need to be able to get there safely and get around to do the rest of their, the things they need to do, get to school, get to visit their friends, get to the places they need to go. So um, we had a meeting on September 29th at Hampshire Heights um, to uh, talk about the King Street development. We were very glad to have Carolyn there. Um, to explain to residents what's going on. Um, and we, uh, Josefina Rodriguez, she planned to come tonight. Her son was sick and she couldn't be here. Um, she lives on Barrett Street at Pheasant Home Apartments. But her uh, testimony here tonight, I'll say it for her, was less fast food, more fruits and vegetables. That was uh, her input. Um, but we had many residents from Hampshire Heights, Hathaway Farms, and um, Pheasant Hill, um, Elba Heredia, Annabel Rosero, Lucas Garcia, Neda Garcia, Marta Rodriguez, Abigail Claudio, and Josefina Rodriguez spoke about their safety concerns. And again, we understand that your primary, primary concern is the business development of that corridor. But um, for the record, we would really like to say that um, we hope to see that the businesses that are developing along King Street responsibly allocate adequate money to ensure safe, uh, safety and access for pedestrians and bicyclists, including people who use strollers and wheelchairs. Um, we'd like to see walls, uh, sidewalks installed on Bridge Road from Jackson Street, the corner of Jackson Street along Bridge Road to King Street. There is no safe way to get there. It's often very packed with traffic and cars and it's very hazardous on foot or by bike down to the Pride Station, the intersection of King Street. And then from King Street across Damon Road, there is no safe way to get to the River Run Apartments, to get to Industrial Park, um, to get to the, uh, career, uh, the Career Center, to get anywhere down that way, you can't access um, that, you can't uh, safely get there. Um, from North King Street, you can't connect to the bike trail, so we really strongly support the continuation of the bike trail. Right now, if you don't have a car, it is like there is a really big river that runs along King Street. You know, that getting past that intersection of King Street and Bridge Road, is there are a lot of people who will not cross it. Um, and what some people use as an alternative from North King Street trying to get down is Hatfield Street, which again, it's one of those tendrils off King Street, but there is no sidewalk and no bike lane. My son is riding a bike on that street every single day. There are trucks and cars hurling off King Street at 50 miles an hour, and there's no, there's no room for a bike on there. And people, have, including my son, are there on bikes. So, I think we need to understand that if we do this development, we know there's, you know, just with the Walmart, there's more traffic, and, you know, in the big Y renovation at Staples, there's more traffic on King Street now. And with more development, <laughs> there will be more traffic. And it's getting more and more dangerous for the people who live on King Street and who are trying to reduce traffic by using bicycles and, and, and going by foot, and we're risking our lives. So um, we really ask you to, um, to take that into account and, um, to help, you know, with, when the big, big Y did their renovations and stuff, we had, you know, we saw those improvements, sidewalks behind Big Y, we saw some of those things, but we need to see those things continue because there is such an incredible need in this part of the city. So thank you very much. Uh, good evening, my name is Janet Navuno. I, I work for the um, I work for Bridge Street School. 
Um, and I'm, I'm here to, to sort of add a voice to what everyone has said uh, in, the, in the group. Um, I used to live at Hampshire Heights. Um, I have since moved and, and I live um, on Bedford Terrace. I went, went, and because I have no car at the moment and I've had, I haven't had a car for a while, um, I, I mostly do walk a lot to to and from the bank, um, um, East Hampton Savings Bank, or uh, to see friends on, um, on in River Run. And um, I, just like uh, everyone has said, um, it's, it's, it's really one of the hardest places to walk. And so um, my son and I have a system we sort of use the cross, we, because we found out that, okay, if we use the crosswalk at at stop and shop, and then somehow connected through through the back, we would find ourselves on uh, in the industrial industrial area, and then we would somehow cross the street and get end up get go, going to River Run, and so we were we are able to um, to get wherever we're going. So this is just adding a voice to to what uh, everyone has said. Uh, my son had a asked me a question about 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 that part of of, of King Street and and why why it just why there was no access to it and I, and he say he he has a saying that oh my goodness that has to be the old city of Northampton I think to him it's the Asian town side of <laughs> Northampton in his head that's what he thinks because it's because he he never he rarely goes there because of the fact that. We, we we can't easily go. I tell him that it's so hard to to access because we would have to to either walk all the way along along the main road, or or would have to go via Jackson Street School, then cross down, then go through Hampshire Heights, and that's a longer walk sometimes. But I just wanted to add a voice to that and say that we we um we hope that in the next development there will be more crosswalks and more um. More side, more sidewalks, and uh, and it would be my safer to walk along that road. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Luz Eneida Garcia, and uh, I am a member of Public with Power, and I have been working for Casa Latina for the last 11 years. So I, I know a lot of people in the Latino community, and I know many people that live in Hampshire Heights and Hathaway Farm, and in other projects actually in front of Hathaway Farm, and we are talking about low-income people, and many of them, they don't have the opportunity to have cars, so they walk everywhere they need to go. They walk to Big Y, they walk to a Stop and Shop, and to the Survivor Center, and for that they need to use the sidewalk through a Barrett Street or a, from Hampshire Heights to a, through Jackson Street. And we have to say that it was great to have the opportunity to have that car that has been fixed in the big uh, bicycle hood area that has been uh, changed. But uh, the part that goes from Jackson Street School to Hampshire Heights, that site uh, is in very bad condition. The same for the, uh, the sidewalk that goes through Jackson Street to King Street. Uh, living in Hathaway Farm for 18 years, uh, it was very hard for me to go out with my son who has a wheelchair, he's in a wheelchair, and to push him through the sidewalk, it was very dangerous. We have to be very careful. Uh, now I have a few friends uh, that live there, and a, a couple of them, uh, one has a scooter and the other one has a wheelchair and they have the, the same issues that I had. And not to mention the families that have uh, children and they have to use the strollers. And in addition to that, the kids that have to go, that use the, the bicycles. Sometimes they just go through, uh, if they are gonna, I have seen myself, many of them, that they use the, the road to go down through uh, Jackson Street to King Street Instead, they, you use, they, they just go through the, through the uh, road because the sidewalk is pretty bad. Uh, so I wish in the future uh, to have that opportunity to, to see that that is going to be done because 
it's very important for the Latino community that they don't have the choice uh, to decide to go in car or walk. They have to go walking. And uh, for those people that go to the survivor center, uh, you know, it's, it's very important because it's not just, you know, they need to, to, to get, a, to go there, to get, you know, if you go to BY, stop and shop, but people that go uh, to the survivor center, they have big needs, so they really need to, to be uh, safe in those areas. So thank you for listening to us, and I hope uh, things are going to change in the uh, future, not too long. Thank you. Oh, just one second. I mean, it's not zoning, it's infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of Damon Road. Damon Road's really frustrating because it's been such a slow process. It was a design for Damon Road done a dozen years ago now. Um, so it's moving very, very slowly. As part of Amtrak coming back to Northampton, um, it will be a signal installed, at least at this point. It hopes it's not going to change. There'll be a signal installed where Industrial Drive is Damon Road. Um, and that signal will be tied to, to King Street. So at least it's not going to solve the problem, but at least it makes it a little better in terms of crossing Damon Road. It will have a, a, a crossing signal. Uh, we haven't seen it yet. The problem is this is done by Ness, the rail side of Mass DOT, mm -hmm. and so we haven't seen this much. We, we've certainly asked for that. And sidewalks and all that. Sidewalks are further down. So Am Amtrak is funding this little piece that's there. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, sidewalks are in the, the, the overall design piece that we've been waiting a dozen years for. So we, we want to have it. One of the discussions has been the problem is from, to do from Damon Road all the way to the state rail trail is a big ticket item. And so just nothing happens year after year. The city's looking at going from uh, King Street as far as Drossel's funeral home um, for a few reasons, but one of which is because the cost will be much lower just to do that portion, and that's a higher priority for what you're all talking about, it's more likely to make it through the process. I think one thing, just to, uh, sorry, one second. Um, just to reply to, to some of the comments, there's, w one of the things we've talked about, there's a difference between infrastructure and zoning. Zoning uh, can control the buildings and the heights. Infrastructure is the building of the roads and the intersections. So as Bill alluded to, when a developer comes in and wants to do development on King Street, we will often ask for uh, what we call uh, payment or, uh, traffic mitigation fees. And that has to do with the new stoplight and the intersection we're going to get in front of the old price chopper, in front of uh, uh, the, the diner. Um, so as development occurs on King Street, so assuming this zoning passes and we, we trigger some development on King Street, the development will help pay for that infrastructure that zoning doesn't necessarily define which are sidewalks and bike paths and crosswalks and traffic lights. Those are kind of things that we get as development occurs. Um, has, one of the comments I made about um, you know, healthy food versus fast food, one is the traffic mitigation fee, because we're trying not to subsidize fast food restaurants, is the fee for, tra for fast food restaurants is very high. Um, mm. So it, it indirectly makes it really hard for some of those things. That's mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Maureen Kearney. I'm the city councilor for Ward 1. And I wanted to thank you all for um, hearing from folks tonight, especially thanks to Carolyn for coming to the meetings of Families with Power, um, for the couple of meetings that we had to discuss the zoning changes. And um, uh, what I was struck by in those meetings was that um, despite the fact that the very points that Wayne just brought up about the differences between, you know, the, uh, the, zoning, um, the zoning and the development uh, um, functions of these, of these various boards, there's still a frustration that people have when they, when they understand that there's a development, you know, that there are zoning changes and they have some certain concerns. And um, so it goes, it, it's very important that at least people be heard and that there is some way for those concerns to be um, expressed and possibly even incorporated. And I'm very happy to hear that there's going to be a traffic signal as part of the development agreement with Coal Dust. And I, I don't know to what extent there's anything more concrete in the, um, 
and the zoning that, you know, in the previous, in the 2002 zoning, I know at least there were incentives, there was, there was a formula for calculating, you know, money that could be uh, captured by the city. And I know that we're giving up some of that as a way to provide incentives to other developers. So if there's a way that there can be, you know, a better sense of um, what we do capture in the form of better access and better pedestrian safety, especially for butters, I'd be happy to see that. One of the most salient points I heard raised at these meetings was that the folks that, especially folks living at Hampshire Heights who have no vehicles, really do want to be part of the community, want as much as possible to be able to walk or ride their bikes or push strollers, you know, to be integrated into the community. And the, um, the limitations they have on access and, uh, really create a, a separation that most of us in the community would like to see broken down. So um, I encourage you know, any further discussion about that and just ways that, the, the one point also is that area of, it's a small section, but that one section of Bridge Road that goes from the corner of Jackson Street down to King Street, where there is a path already worn, you can see where, you know, hundreds, thousands of people have kind of walked through those grasses there. You know, there, should, there really should be a sidewalk there. And, uh, you know, I don't know where the funding source would come for that or what the, what the means would be, but people will continue to walk down that dangerous path. And if there's a way that we can find some, some solution to that, um, something beyond saying that belongs to Mass Highway or that's the purview of public works, just having a conversation that will at least uh, allow folks to hear that we're working on it. Thanks. Just a question. We're not changing the traffic mitigation plan, right? So the, there's a there is a formula in the zoning for traffic mitigation. For a business, it's it, there are different thresholds, and as Wayne mentioned, the high impact not only for vehicles but also for health, like fast foods, has um, higher mitigation fee. In the highway business district, no, there's no change to that. So in this section, I did mention that for the section south of the rail trail, um, because it would be rezoned out of highway business, then those parcels wouldn't be um, paying into the mitigation. And so I could see, for example, and, and so that's already in the zoning, the, the requirement that you um, accommodate pedestrian and bicycle access from the parcel, you know, connected to the parcel, that's in the zoning. Um, essentially, that's why um, during the CBS um, permit process, there was um, a permit condition that they connect with a physical um, crosswalk to the Hampshire Heights. Um, but all along, in fact, Walgreens, um, when that came in, we required the bike path connection to a dead end, essentially, as a holding pattern, because we figured that at some point, we're going to get there and we're going to be able to create access to the bike path itself. So that's in there as well. And I can see as Cole Morgan turns over, you know, if there's traffic mitigation that you, know, you all have heard now, but where the um, tendrils that come into King Street need to be addressed. So Bridge Road and Cole Morgan, I see a strong relationship um, to that project as potentially a possibility. My name is John Skibisky, and I own property up in Upper uh, North King Street. <clears throat> and I'm uh, wondering, uh, in regards to that upper area uh, between Hatfield Street and the uh, uh, market there, Co-op Market, are you still planning to have the sidewalk coming from, well, like, uh, Weber's insurance all the way up to the co-op. Is that still a it's part just, of this plan? It's not part of the zoning plan. So this goes back to traffic mitigation issue. The River Valley Market um, contributed $150,000 in traffic mitigation um, fees for their, you know, as part of that rezoning. And that money is being used through higher tie and bond, and they're designing, um, look at the intersection of Hatfield and North King Street to put in hopefully a roundabout but possibly a signal. Um, to connect the sidewalk from River Valley Market up to um, uh, Walmart, and 
and then up to Cook Avenue. So that has nothing to do with your zoning proposal, right? The and, sidewalk. And just to be clear, all we have money for at this point is to do the design. It would then go into the it's, it's eligible federal and state funds, so it would then go into the queue for funding. Yeah. But but all this money we're talking about is really just to get to full design. All right. But that makes us eligible and it's probably about a five or six year lead time. My concern was that if that sidewalk is goes along some 800 feet of my frontage. Who's going to maintain that? The city. Every time the snow plow comes by, covers the sidewalk. It has to be uncovered if you're going to expect pedestrian traffic. And it's almost an unrealistic assumption that that can be done. Uh, uh, Mr. since we're talking about something that's theoretically yeah, might yeah, happen in well, five years, and it's not part of the zoning itself. All right. I might say that's a different discussion. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Sure. Uh, anybody else? Great. Um, so for the board, um, we have so we have three votes: the, the map change, extra business, highway business. We have the uh, list of changes, which Carolyn has described uh, on the slide, and then we have um, to decide what we're going to do with each of those three. So. Uh, public comment session is still open. We close that and deliberate. Uh, how do people want to proceed? Do you want me to decide? Yes. <laughs> uh, what I would say then is, um, unless there's more clarity we want for the public, I would say let's close the public hearing. And let's do these one at a time. Let's do central business, central central business, and King Street. Uh, and uh, so these are votes to recommend them to the city council. Uh, central business doesn't really have any changes that we propose. Entry to a business, I think there were a couple things, maybe Carol. Uh, and, no, entry to a business, uh, was there? Um, there weren't any changes to entry to a business. Okay, so let's pull up the. Uh so. Just to remind you, because this is a. In essence, legislative action you're doing instead of a permit action. When you're doing permits, once you post a public hearing, you can't hear from the public. Posing public hearing is the formal end of the process, but if somebody's on press and you feel you want to, you can still. Because it's legislative, it's right. So you're a little more flexible. Um, for a second. All right, moving to second. Any discussion? Judge, do you have a Sorry, no. All in favor? <laughs> Alright, so the public session the public hearing is closed. The plan said we can open it. And Anton Lee's done a good first time. That's it's just been a great so, discussion. Okay. Thank you very much. Can you just remind me I've lost the thread on where ordinance comes into this? Ordinance, uh, so we met with them in the joint meeting last time. Yeah. But what they decided to do is rather than continue it to another joint meeting with us, they continued it to Tuesday. Oh, right. So they're meeting this Tuesday to do probably what they're going to be their recommendation. Um, and from what I understand with Wayne, um, the clock starts ticking 90 days from the day ordinance closes their public hearing. So the city council has to vote or move on this within 90 days of when ordinance closes their public hearing and votes, which takes us across into the new year. So these are going to go to the city council. The hope is that the city council will act on them before the end of this year. They can get before the change. Be, before right before right. the council, um, but for example, say they, they could carry it over. They could carry it over, mm -hmm. or if they do nothing in the ninety days, we could <laughs> we could reintroduce it. So it's the, the clock's going to start ticking on Tuesday, and the city council has approximately two and a half months. Assuming that they vote on it, right? Yeah, right. But if, right. They, if, they, if they, they do nothing, it, it just it, it, there's a ninety day window from the 18th of October with ordinance. Well, if they close the hearing. Right, if they close the hearing. Yeah. Right. So whenever ordinance closes, that's when the 90 days starts that the city council has to act on. So, um, well, so, so just to clarify, there weren't any other text changes relative to the entranceway business. Okay. Yeah. So let's do central business first. Give the map up to central business. Yeah. So central business is solely the map changes. We've approved and moved on the zoning change for central business in the library. Right. So, uh, oh no, sorry. Yeah, so oh. that's the expansion of central business. 
Any discussion on the expansion of central business? So that I take a motion. So this is a motion to recommend, to do nothing, or to not recommend. It goes to city council. To recommend the map change. Right. right. This is just the map change. Discussion. All in favor? All right, so that's the central business map change. So, entranceway business, there's been no text changes since the last time we met. Um, so, I would say, is there any discussion on entranceway business? So, entranceway business continues up from central business up to the bike trail, mm -hmm. including the old uh, on block. Actually, we can have the motion that we can discuss it. So someone would like to make a motion on this one. Jen, I think it's your turn. Uh, I will make a motion to recommend that um, it's not the map change. It's the, the approval of entranceway business. Well, it is a map change because it's from highway business oh, to entranceway business. But I guess I would also say that package that includes the new table with all the uses and all that that go along, and the design standards that go along with entranceway business. So the map changes, the zoning changes, and the design changes right. for entry entrance business. So. I think we learned last time. After Carolyn yeah, speaks, we can always just say so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, any discussion on entranceway business? Thank you for being here. <clears throat> talked about this, my, my thought was the, the, the extension of, it, of, of, of central business out as far as we did, which has the, 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 the height requirement. And this has the 20 foot, entrance foot business has 20 foot plus uh, design guidelines. So I think that was, yeah. what's, the, what's the requirement of the highway business? 20 feet, no second story. Required for a second story, or no, it allows, no, but it allows you know oh. up to 65 feet. Right. Yeah. Is, it, is that is that 20 feet up there? Is it also 20 feet? Is it, is that? Entrance way, yes, 20, 20 feet. feet. Okay, the same, yeah, it's the same in highway and entrance, right? Yeah. With design, the design guidelines, so we don't get the flat roof. <coughs> right. mm -hmm. But the difference in entrance is they'll get. Closer to the street. Right, they have to be much closer to the street. Now. In fact, there's no parking in front of the building. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So the building is none of the buildings that are you know, all that. a good example. Well, the ones down here are all single story. <laughs> <laughs> These are all single story, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. On the, yeah, but I mean, um, on the <laughs> west side, it is a nice building. Yeah, on the no, west I'm side, a, I'm those like are the, mostly second two stories. I'm on the east yeah. side. I mean, I don't think Blighter really counts as a two story building. Sorry, the old What does it? The old Honda. Which one of those buildings is the old Honda? The second one. The second or the third one? It's the third one. It's the third one. It's the third one. Third. 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 That's the hardware store. Oh, they used to be Gold's. All right, we digress. So <laughs> I'm going to finish it up. So we have a motion and a second. We've had a discussion. Uh, are we ready to vote? All right. All in favor? All opposed? I'm, I'm You're in favor. All right. All right, so I just play business and pass the recommendations. Um, so now we have um, King Street, where we have to uh, give a slide, Carolyn, with the, the changes. I don't have the map, but I just have these other graphics. Oh, well, I have the, um, yeah, I'll do this guy. Uh, the design standards. And the one comment before we, we talk about this one is, uh, I know we heard a lot tonight about infrastructure, traffic lights, sidewalks, crosswalks. And I think what's important to remember is those are the infrastructure changes. You can use zoning to get 
to promote the development and the creation of those, either traffic mitigation or that we do in the um, industrial park, uh, or we do the River Valley Market, where we're, we're requiring developers to put in sidewalks, crosswalks, traffic signals that we did with Cole Vest at the old Price Chopper. Um, uh, but those aren't necessarily zoning. So, um, zoning, um, so anyway, uh, I think we all understand the differentiation. Do you want to go over those? Yeah, the changes. So, um, so this um, first section of the design standards, the proposed changes would be to um, delete the requirement that you provide this um, flanked um, um, buffered sidewalk for both bike pack access and sidewalk. And I think the intention was never to say you for you know connecting from the bike path and the sidewalk. So it's one or the other. So the, the idea would be just to delete that highlighted text and public bike path. Down below at the bottom of the paragraph uh, um, is the just, um, addition of the language relative to an incentive for um, low impact design standards for stormwater management. So that um, you could reduce the buffer width of eight feet on each side of that main spine of a sidewalk to six feet if you do, if you're proposing um, low impact design standards for stormwater. And um, uh, staff, I, I think that's a, a valid um, way to provide an incentive because I don't think we're really gonna get, we, we're, we're not required yet to do any of these um, sort of new technologies for stormwater management. So I think that would be a good incentive. The reason is it, it adds additional parking space. So that's the incentive for the developer by dropping that width. Um, the other thing that came up um, in that discussion, I think um, Councillor um, Freeman Daniels had suggested, what if you want to do an eight foot wide sidewalk instead of six feet, and then you can have a bike head spine going in. I think that it's a valid, um, suggestion as well as a means to draw to narrow the buffer width so that's what the red box is um, you know we could add um, text that says you know either LID or an eight foot wide sidewalk or multi-use walk um, um, would allow you to reduce your buffer width on that one so that's that um, then going to the next page there we dropped this graphic um, showing landscaping between a building and its uh, adjoining sidewalk um, and also the language that required that and that the, it was again sort of a holdover from the focus on retail establishments so it didn't really make sense to add that extra dimension on a building within a property to have a required six foot deep um, landscaping belt between the building and sidewalk um, so that's that one. And um, the glazing section, um, again, this, um, the original standard from 2002 was targeted at large scale retail establishments. So the language here is um, clarifying that the buildings that are on the sidewalks um, are facing um, at the public sidewalk. Um, should have a certain amount of glazing, but the buildings that are set back beyond the buffer um, can be reduced, the amount of glazing can be reduced and to 40% versus 60%. Acknowledging that some of these buildings are gonna be office, banks, or other establishments that aren't gonna um, be designed with um, a large wall that's um, primarily glass. Um, so, I would recommend that you incorporate that change. And then that's it for the design piece of it, but the text then had um, changes um, that included um, the um, deletion of the reference to cycle track in 11.5 and I can go to that on the screen if you want, but also the clarification of the drive-through language. So those are the, and, and then adding the um, limitation, the prohibition on retail over 90,000 square feet. 
to those three things for the actual HB text. Can you make that bigger again? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's going to go to the actual sections. So, um, oh, okay. this is the 1016, the drive through establishments. Um, and the idea is just to clarify that um, the concern is that we're not creating the principal use isn't the drive through use on that site, but that it's really an accessory to other functions on the site. And that's when it would be allowed by special permit. Um, if that's that change. And um, there's a change regarding cycle tracks, actually. I think it's there. Um, Eleven five B three. This language um, about adding, eliminating the word cycle track in this section because that's the. This is really talking about on site improvements, and um, we're so we're talking about sidewalks and bike paths on the private side, and the cycle track um, terminology is really intended for the King Street. Right of way, not the private side. And then the other piece is just in the table, adding back this in red retail above 90,000 square feet footprint um, is not allowed. There's a, there's a typo in the Recommendation and also on the screen. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> the HB Which design section? standards are highlighted. It's, it's P, P point, this is point B, P point one, one A on this sheet. I, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't in the other document as well. Okay. So it says this buffer, this buffer may be reduced to six feet on either side if and any foot. Okay. So that's in here. Oops. This section? I don't, I don't know where it is. In there. Oh, okay. So it's just the text change. It's okay. not. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't know whether you okay. just copied it from there. Yeah, no, no. no. It's, okay. a, it's a PDF. It's too hard to copy. Carolyn, the sidewalk that's in front of the park station, that's not six feet. Is to the, to the 
retail establishments that work. And that's all vestry and family. And, and everything works in harmony. But getting to the court, or all that we've heard about, the only complaints mostly are getting to the court. So we talked about traffic mitigation, and depending on the, the use of the building, the mitigation fees might be, if you're generating more traffic, the fees are bigger. But are they tied into, right now, if, if you um, abut a residential area, we've got a 30-foot buffer, or like a planting buffer, mm -hmm. are, are mitigation fees tied into um, where your parcel is? So if it, if it abuts a residential area, that the mitigation fees are higher for that particular, you know, no matter what you yeah. do or how much traffic you generate, just the fact that you're next to, you know what I mean? No, I mean the buffer is this is, is sort of the mitigation. So right. it's not a traffic mitigation, but it's a, a physical sort of a barrier mitigation. Traffic mitigation can be used anywhere beyond the property. The, the, the idea about traffic mitigation is off-site traffic mitigation. You still have to do stuff in front of your property, you still have to do your sidewalk and all that stuff. And then there's this off-site traffic mitigation requirement. So it could be used to address um, deficiencies on the streets coming into King Street, if that's where it looks like, um, you know, that's where the deficiency is. So, so we, it doesn't so necessarily have to be right in front of the, the building or right. one block down. So the old Honda place is, is redeveloped, and we get our sidewalks in front and everything's nice and neat, but we can take that from traffic mitigation and apply it to the intersection of Damon Road and Bridge Road. Except that there won't be traffic mitigation for the old Honda, because the idea is this, the idea is oh that, that is right. right but but anywhere else north right, of the right, rail trail right, right. right. so exactly. we got Walt for instance here's an example we got money from Walgreens some of that is going to the intersection at North Street the design for the North Street interchange and the whole we had BH uh, so it just BHC goes in the traffic design. mitigation pot and we can use that money wherever we can but we but the goal is to try to use it where the the Spirit greatest is impact right. is within, you know, a distance, so. Because in general, in my opinion, I have no issue after, after vetting this forever, and I, I, I'm comfortable with what we ended up with for the corridor, going up and down the street and getting people from that sidewalk to the building. I think that all works. Um, and if, if in passing this or recommending it, we can enhance the, the tendril access that we talked about today, I don't know what we can do, but if we can do something along those lines, I'd be in favor of that. Yeah, and I don't think, again, I'm not, I don't think it's a zoning issue beyond right. the traffic mitigation, <coughs> but I do think that it's important information to have, so as moving forward, and we hear about these projects that come, we can say, well, you know what, we know there are issues getting to King Street, and therefore, when the, when, as the development comes along, we can maybe start, and, and it goes to traffic, uh, tra parking and transportation, I think city councilors need to hear it. I think the mayor needs to hear it. I think, you know, the committees that work on the design and um, for the streets need to hear that and understand that so that as we're developing policy and developing design standards for those streets, all of that is kept in mind. Well, remind me with the church. We did prevail on getting the access out the back of the bike path. It's still in the Soon, but, yeah. <laughs> but yes, we are. That's what I want to bring up here then, because should we right up front, you know, say that we are interested in act? Is there any way to do that? Because that's what we were hearing today. You're, you're wanting more than just front door access to these businesses. Well, the zoning does say that, and in fact, some of this text here, um, I can go to. It says you need to connect. If you're abutting a bike path, you have to connect. The zoning does say that. Um, the other thing I want to bring up is this issue of sort of sharing access points. The church is a good example where the permit actually said you either connect directly or figure out some other mechanism, maybe it's with your neighbor, to connect a bike path. So in fact, I, we believe they are working with the abutter to create a, a, um, a joint project to connect to the bike path and then that still brings access to the church property, but the access isn't exactly on their property. And that's just as good as having it directly if you're sharing it. Yeah, no, it's not. So sharing's allowed. That I'm interested in. Yeah. And one other thing, I just this week was at a meeting talking about transportation to the Survival Center. We do not have a bus that goes by the Survival Center, so 
that is a walking issue for people to get to and from there. It's a good thing it's around the bike path. <laughs> that's the other direction, right? I mean, that's that's all sidewalked, all the way up Jackson Street. It's sidewalk. Um, mm -hmm. They're carrying their groceries. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but bus. I mean, <laughs> that's not even close to it. <laughs> well, um, I know this is um, not directly related to the zoning issue that we're talking about, but it seems to me that um, is there an overall, it seems like there should be some overall plan connecting these developments with hundreds of people in them to businesses on King Street, and it seems to me it would be good business. Um, and then, is there an overall plan or, or design or even a, a sketch on the back of a napkin or, <laughs> or not? Um, no, I mean, I think the overall, the big vision is we need, we've been pushing for sidewalks and, and crosswalks on Bayman Road because River Run is isolated. It is an island, and we know that. And so the big picture is for at least the 10 years, 11 years that I've known about it, we've been pushing to have the Bayman Road design change to incorporate sidewalks and crosswalks and that way get people to King Street because that's where the services and businesses are um, that are walkable and accessible that way. And then from the other side, I think, I think, and within the zoning it says, you know, connect to, to adjoining properties. The one issue is there's also that conflict of residential against commercial and wanting to create a buffer. Yeah. So there's that way, you know, some people want to have the, Clear at, and, but there are other ways to get to it. You don't necessarily have to have the connection through the property, but the sidewalk connection, so down Bridge Road that was discussed, I mean, that would be another way to get people from the Hampshire Heights community, even from further up Bridge Road, down to... Um, I mean, it just seemed to me that if we had some sort of a sense of what it might look like, big picture, that as businesses came to us for permits, we would, you know, have a better idea of what we might ask them. Just the thought. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, sometimes we ask them. Oh, yeah, no. Well, sometimes we ask them for specific things, like, you know, as we've done. Yeah, that's. But, but oftentimes we don't have, because it's the it's the goal of getting the money, yeah. getting enough money to yeah. get it. To do I get that. it. Yeah. And like, you know, we have enough money to do a design right now of Dunkin' Donuts, but we don't. Have, that's what we're doing the design for. That and also the Hatfield intersection, so North Street, Summer Street, King. Right. We're doing a design. For no, for the street. <laughs> <laughs> the intersection in front of. Yeah. I, I thought we could do something a little. Oh, yeah. Right. No. <laughs> That's right. Not the one downtown. No. Uh, any other questions on this one? So, the recommendation, uh, or the motion has to include the recommendation as well as the changes to the, 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 the table of zoning and the uh, design guidelines. Right. No map changes. Right. No map changes in this section. Uh, who hasn't done yet? Jen, you're off the This is a hard one. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm sure right this. Uh, well, Carolyn can say it. <laughs> what do you can say? I'll say so so well, you could yeah. say, you know, it's the high, I would, I would um, summarize it as the highway business um, package of changes, which includes the table and um, dimensional changes plus the design standards. Um, and the associated site plan approval requirements with the modifications since its introduction. Well. <laughs> I have to repeat that. No, you can no. say so. Um, I move we adopt the highway business. We recommend, we recommend uh, to City Council the highway business um, with the uh, Burbage, uh, Carolyn Burbage. <laughs> That was a punt. It's <laughs> a second. All right, any further discussion on this one? All in favor? All right, two minutes. Thank you, everybody. That was two years. And it's not done yet. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. Uh, Are you guys from Coke? Are you guys from Coke? No. Oh. Uh, no, I told them they didn't need to come. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so 
copies of the um, site plan changes for Coca-Cola. Um, and I, I, I emailed you the, the gist of the change is that they, uh, I guess, when they originally proposed moving the guardhouse, which is sort of the checkpoint for both the 18-wheelers that are coming in to pick up, as well as any other visitors that might be going to the facility um, in automobiles, that was one centralized location. And by if, if they were to move the um, guardhouse to check the 18-wheelers in, then it would essentially allow a, a place for cars can just whip by and not do the official check-in. So they really didn't want to move the guardhouse. They understand the issue of wanting to make sure those trucks are off of um, industrial drive as quickly as possible. So they've come up with a management solution whereby they have um, a sign that will direct the trucks to just keep moving forward past the guard house and um, they have a place for three side-by-side, -side, I think, to be stationed, is that what the site plan shows, and then four backed up behind it. They sometimes have three tractor trailers coming in at once. Um, that's not a regular occurrence. They certainly don't have seven, but they've shown seven, the, the, the consul consultant said that seven would be an incredibly abnormal number of tractor trailers to ever come on the site all at one time, but they have the capacity to pull seven in off of industrial drive at once. So what they would like is a, um, approval from you all that this is a satisfactory means of accomplishing the same thing, which is getting the trucks off of industrial drive as quickly as possible. So they would wave them all in, tell them to wait to get checked in. Yeah, there'll be a stop bar and then they'll go out. Is it a physical bar, like a physical stop bar, or is it just a painted, just painted line? line? And then they'll have signage right at the guardhouse telling them what to do, you know, to move forward to that line and then the person will get out and yeah, but the only thing I can think of is that it abuts the bike path, and so if you have a lot of trucks idling there, that could be really gross. But they have them idling at some point anyway. anyway. That would have been just really, they would have idled almost the same place for the guard shack. Right, yeah, right, 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 you're right. Well, and well aren't they uh, subject to the law about how long they can idle? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's really a matter of a few minutes, and then they move on into the, um, the, the load and... I never understood why they wanted to change it before because of the, if you were driving there with a car, you had to go around. And it was right. silly, but it makes sense to me that it's just like we were in the jail. When they expand, are, they, are, are you confident that their estimate of their number of trucks stacking up is right? They're, they're done. They're, done. Yeah. they're waiting for their final CO, and they can't get their CO until you all sign off on this piece because this was part of the site plan approval. and. Since they hadn't moved it, we said, "Oh, wait a second! Your shack is in the right place." So. Your shack. <laughs> <laughs> Your house. No little mini house. So, so, so it's not like they moved it. Now they're moving it back. They never moved it. Right. You call them on it, and yeah. they just want to leave it where it is. Well, yeah. I I want to move that. We accept their proposal as requested. Approve it. Is there a second? Second. second. Right. Any further discussion? I would say Mark and Franny and I did have a chance to do a tour. I think we, we were all invited, but some people didn't make it. It was very, very interesting. Cool. It yeah. was a very cool operation. That, that was, was, a that long was time impressive. Ago. Yeah. When I was having my surgery. Yeah, you would you understand. Yeah. That was like a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they were very friendly. They, were, they, they, they must have spent two hours with us. It was a lot. It was a lot. Oh, a lot of shower caps, some yes. earplugs. Oh, that's right. That's right. Did you get to have them with you? Nice. Yeah, we did. nice. They've actually exceeded their job expectations. I saw them. They yeah. exceeded the job. I mean, yeah, it cool. was yeah. really an interesting yeah. tour. I was, I was impressed. Um, all in favor? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no, not quite chickens yet. Uh, uh, home business. I wasn't here for this. So, so I, just to remind to everyone, I don't know how I don't know if I put this in the staff memo, but at the last meeting you all moved. Um, there were two dissensions, I think, from that moving as recommended, coming out of um, discussions prior to that. Um, the home occupation, the home business modifications. And sort of thinking about it more 
and the, the discussion was about the complexity of trying to figure out what were the vehicle trips and how you count trips and all of that. So I guess at a staff level, we felt like even though there was a uh, uh, unit, uh, not unanimous, uh, majority recommendation to move the ordinance forward uh, as an ordinance to city council, um, we took another stab at it to see if it might address some of the issues that you know, Marilyn and Franny had with, with the complexity of the language. So the, the ordinance in front of you is modified by eliminating the allowance for employees and also re um, calculating the number of allowed trips by, by actual visits and not by counting vehicle trips. Um, vehicle round trips. And the, I, the rationale behind that is really to say, well, if you're a home business, the idea is that you're invisible. And once you start having employees, that that's, takes it a little bit beyond the step of just having sort of your own home business that you might be seeing clients, you might see people occasionally, and that maybe that really still needs to stay in special permit. Um, and then with the registration process, with a building commissioner, you'd still, you know, with five visits, say you want to have to see five clients um, to do massage or what have you, um, or if you're working on some um, new innovative iPhone 8 <laughs> and you need to see, <laughs> consult with somebody a few times a week, um, then you could do that, but you have to register with the building department and say, Here, here's my anticipated visits per day and per week, so that there is still that mechanism to evaluate that. Um, and so I just put that forward. You guys can decide that you don't want to take it up again because you already voted um, to move it forward under the previous language, um, or open it up for discussion again. So I wasn't here uh, for the last one, so um, I guess I'll leave it to you guys. You, so the big change is change the way you count traffic. If you have employees, it's a special permit. Um, and the other special permit criteria are um, hours of operation outside 7 to a.m. to 8 p.m., two, two or more open studios, outdoor storage. Um, how well do you guys feel? Does this feel better than the last one? So say that again. So if, if you have employees, Special Your special okay. permit, but the visits are five. There's no more than five, five per day. day. Twenty-five a week. Five a week. Well, my initial reaction is five days, five visits per day isn't very many. What kind of business do you envision would fall under this? And when you wouldn't have a account, uh, you wouldn't have a, a, a social worker or something like that seeing. Only five clients a day. Yeah, and I mean, I the, the zoning would be an hour. Piano teacher, maybe. Yeah, it could be music lessons. It could be. Um, we had we've done the zoning board and the city have approved. The city has approved through the zoning board um, psychotherapy, massage therapists, whatever kind of therapy you can even imagine that is in Northampton. Um, at those low thresholds. Some people just say, I don't want to see more than two people a day. Some people say, I want to see eight people a day, and it's, you know, seven to eight or whatever. And that's then the special permit allowance, or if there have been an issue with the neighborhood about that much, maybe the zoning board says, well, you can't have eight per day, but you can have five per day. Or some people who have, want to have the flexibility and have two on one day and five on another day. I mean, that's, that's, Pretty five isn't the maximum, but it certainly isn't the lowest number that we've seen through special permit. Does, does anyone feel that we should that should it apply to certain zones in the city and not others, or it's just all been zone wide? Yeah, city wide. So this is this will be city wide. I mean, city wide. Yeah. It's essentially for the residential districts, not the commercial districts. Right. Well, see, that's why I was favoring. You're gonna, you know, have people come to your house for any reason, a special permit because I think it's very different in very dense neighborhoods with no parking. So I don't see that all businesses are created equal in that sense. 
So it would give neighbors a chance to, by through the special permit process, it would give the community the chance or the neighbors a chance to say why they think they're not bothered by it at all or why they think they are. If you do it by right. So you're saying a special permit for any customer, any business? So you're saying keep it as it is, essentially. Don't That's that was what I, that was my thinking last last week. Yes. And, the, and so you, your home business means no no external visits if you do special permit. You can do it. You have to get a special permit. But you yeah. do this if, special If you have customers, process. or if you're a home business, regardless. If you have customers yeah. coming okay. to your house. But if you're a your, trick. But if you're a, you're yeah. a lawyer, your clients, your customers. If you're a massage therapist, your client. So okay. so what I'm saying is. Anybody coming to yeah, it? Yeah, any customers coming to your house. Yeah, that creates traffic. traffic. That creates traffic and parking problems. Yeah. And that's what we have now, right? I mean, so you're advocating for that as well. Right. Oh. Well, I'm, that, that was my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm thinking on is in this economy, fostering better use of buildings in our town that are, you know, you're already living in, you could run a small business. I, mean, I think there's some pretty green reasons for trying to promote home business for commute. You know, that's that's someone who's not making two trips a day in and out to go to another job. And I agree, I don't want to, I like the change better than what we had it because this is this is a smaller step in in that direction. So I'm for the change. Um, but I am also for home businesses, but we'll hear that's we'll hear problems about you know, okay. the next door effect. Uh, but it doesn't sound, I mean, everyone wants to live right next door to something really quiet, not anything else. And so, you know, I, I, it doesn't seem excessive. People run up and down my street all the time. Well, I, I, I don't want to appear anti-home business because I'm not, and I do understand. And I think that, I don't know, as a planning board member, I always try to weigh, you know, What's you know best for the community and the neighbors and the you know and if and sometimes it's close. Yeah, this is <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and for me, this one is like. <laughs> um, but I can see in some areas of the city that I mean, I used to live downtown and uh, near Bridge Street School, and I can tell you when school when people were dropping their kids off, a lot people are inconsiderate. They'll yeah. park right in front of your driveway, um, or so that you can't you know back out and. Um, it creates problems. I know when I was a counselor, people on uh, streets like Graves Avenue, dead end, with no parking, people parked there that walk downtown. Uh, I mean, it would be a horrendous place to have a home business, and it would limit neighbors from you know parking on the street because a lot of those houses don't have parking. So I, I just I, I think it's fine in some cases, and clearly could be bothersome in others. And that's why I like the special permit process because it gives neighbors a chance to express their feelings. Yeah, and I, I have to continue in my agreement. Yeah. So special permit for anything over any any, any, any What if like FedEx or a service guy or something like that doesn't count? You know, deliveries, but customer visits. That's what that's the cut. That's the threshold. That's what well, you can run a, an eBay business trading on eBay without having any customers come in. And right, but you may have FedEx going by six or seven. Yeah, right, you generate more traffic. Yeah, but that is not controlled. Right, and that's also not part of it. FedEx, you know, it's a drop, it's a five minute, you know, it's a drop in, drop out. The right, they're coming down. That's, that's traffic on the street. Anybody else on this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Well, I was going to say, I think I can agree with Devin. I think the positives out of it. I think it partly the issue of isn't the person who is thinking about having a home business to assess what the street is like and what would be possible to, you know, to expect in terms of customers. Right, that's a good point. We talk about this on King Street all the time. You know, anybody put a business up on King Street with no parking? Probably not. That was part of the discussion the last time that you missed right. the public comment discussion. Yeah, I was going to say along those lines, I, I think this is a, a nice incremental step. And I like it. I like the changes that were made. I, I think it's overly burdensome 
to, to require a special permit if you have any customers. I think five trips a day is, a, is, is not a, a tremendous amount of traffic. And my thinking is if you live on a lousy street parking lot, then maybe you're, you'll have second thoughts if I want to open a home business and I can't even find it. When my friend comes over to park, I, they can't even find a spot to park. But maybe that's not a good place to have a home business. I don't think you're going to make, you're not going to make it any worse if it's already bad. Um, and I don't think five trips a day is going to make a good situation a bad situation. So I, I'm in favor of it. I, I think it's a, it's a small step, just like, Going from four to eight chickens instead of four to twelve. <laughs> well, don't talk chickens. It's a little step. Yeah, it's a little step. Yeah. Well, so we have we have three options here. We could we you guys last meeting moved ahead a version of this that's already in the pipeline. So we could do nothing. We could excuse me. Is it in the pipeline or did it stall out and you and we stalled it out? Yeah. Okay. Well, but if we do nothing, it, it right it keeps stalled. Right. Um, we could move ahead with this, the primary change being the five visits, and even with that being special permit, or we could modify this in some way. It sounds like Marilyn and Franny are of one opinion. I think I am along the lines of agreeing with Mark and, and Devin and Catherine. Well, five I see. I, you, you made the primary issue the transportation, but I think not having an employee is a big change. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yeah, we always get hooked yes. up on traffic, right? But so this is the, the other change is no employee. Right. Any employee requires special permit. All right, I, I think the changes are positive. I just don't think, I mean, especially the no employees and the number of visits. I just don't think it's overly burdened to require a special permit. It's a pain in the butt, but it's it's not really burdened to compared to other right, But, but yeah. for, for us, we've been sitting in special permits all the time, but for somebody who's I just think they're doing it. It's my bad. Right, accountants still calling it. Right. Thank you for it. It's going to work. It's a little scary. Well, there, there might be better value in putting down the expectations for what it would mean if you were going to run a business from home instead of just running under the radar. Well, I think we're going to encourage it. But encourage it with these kinds of constraints. Well, I think, uh, Jen, unless you want to weigh in, I think. Well, you had another option. Your options were. Oh. One is do nothing. That was we have one in the pipeline. Two, adopt it as it's written. Three, modify what Carolyn has presented us. So any further modifications. The further modifications that we had were Frandy and, and Marilyn's idea from five to zero. I think you both are in favor of special permit for employees, right? You guys are both in favor of that? Mm -hmm. no, we're, I think we're in favor of special permits for yeah. home business. Period. Yeah. Oh, so you got to be any home business you want a special permit. Because what we're or talking about. Sees, or where there's clients coming to the house. That's what that's, they're saying. That's two different things. Right, that's two different things. You're saying you want a special permit for home business what? with customers. What, what's the system that there is now? What, what do they exist now? If you're seeing any clients yeah, or any the employees, it requires a special permit. I didn't catch it. Any, any kind of client visit or employees mm -hmm. who don't reside in the home require a special permit. Yeah, that's, I like what we have now, yeah. be, be, because it gives the public the opportunity to weigh in. Well, we have now, I mean, scrap all this, all business changes, and leave it to the zoning way just to that. Is that what you might have now? Yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, but I guess the fourth option, I guess we could, we could do that, we could, we could rescind the vote you guys did a couple weeks ago, which, moved the old version of the, the changes for it. So um, I guess what I would say is, um, I think we've all expressed our opinion on how we feel about this. I, I, let's somebody throw a motion out and then we'll resolve it. Is this another one of those recommendations to the council? This is a recommendation no, to the council. No. This is, would be, you would be sponsoring an ordinance. So we would draft it as an ordinance coming from the planning board based on the zoning revisions committee recommendations for this change, so then it would be introduced to city council. It wouldn't come out for public hearing until the next council. Would it come back to us again? Yeah, for oh. public hearing. Oh yeah, we'll come back because of the ordinance. <laughs> right. uh, actually, before we do a motion, I, I should say, are, are members of public be here for the home business or the chicken? Home business. Um, okay. Did you guys like to? <laughs> Did you put that on? Oh, one second. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. 
Sorry, how, how many special permits are in existence for home business now, rough, plus or minus? Well, let me do it another way. We probably do mm, four-ish a year. Okay. So it's been in existence for, well, 15 years now. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Eileen Hirsch. I live on Massasoit Street. I, I can't hear you. Eileen Hirsch, and I live on Massasoit Street. Um, so I, I did have questions about where. So it sounds like it's the whole city. So the home business will happen, like the whole city. So like, can you give? So all the wards, like well, one, one through seven. Residential areas. Oh, residential districts. Right. Because in the commercial districts, you're allowed to do right, right. business. So that's like Ward 1, 2, 3, 4. All the wards five, have six, residential seven. districts. Yes. Right. Okay. They're called the URA, URB, URC, URN, URB. Okay. So, okay. Be. okay. so I guess, um, you know, I understand the economics of the situation, but I, I disagree when you said you can't make bad situations worse if they're already bad in terms of traffic. Because I think that um, I agree with Fran and Marilyn in terms of I think it's a slippery slope. And I think um, you know the things that were cited in the paper in terms of why you would do, why you would open home business and open it up and deregulate it is because uh, one of the reasons was obviously the economics uh, out there. Number two, um, you have neighbors pitting one against another at the hearings. But I think what I worry about is because we have traffic calming issues on Massasoit Street, on many streets, and I was talking to people that live all in different parts of the city and have concerns about the parking. Um, and, you know, I think that you're counting on people to be considerate and thoughtful of their neighbors, and I can tell you not everybody is. And so when you deregulate and then you have to pull back or have neighbors start complaining or counting, I think it's a slippery slope. And I think Marilyn is right by saying that neighbors, you know, I didn't move somewhere uh, with this with, with home business deregulated, then all of a sudden it starts happening around you, not tomorrow, not next week, maybe not next month, but slowly things will change. And then, you know, I think that if you, you're in a situation where you could at least have something to say about it, at least have your voice heard, is better than not. And I think it's better than backtracking. Um, and, you know, we're all fighting over those temporary speed bumps because uh, we're going to have a meeting next week um, about Massasoit Street and stuff going on there. So I, and I know there's uh, many other streets where there's cut throughs and Preston Street's very tight and there's certain areas. So I also agree with maybe there's certain areas of the city where it's a little more open and allowable for this kind of thing. And that's something to think about, too. And you're saying that this is an incremental step, but I think it's bigger than incremental. I think an incremental step would be, like Fran mentioned, looking at certain areas that would be more amenable to traffic and cars, because certain areas are better than others. And then I also think, too, it gives, if certain businesses start setting up, then each one that comes, successive one, at least you have this permit process, so you can say, okay, well, we have this situation now going on. So now we have four four businesses in this area. Can we take on another one? It just gives you a chance to reassess. Make the permitting process easier, and I don't know if you are cheaper. You know, it's two hundred dollars. Make it fifty. You know, make it more economically accessible for people, or just try to make it so I don't know. That's probably hard because there's probably a process, and you can't help the three months or whatever, two to three months that it takes. But I'm just in favor, and I know I've talked to a lot of people who are in favor of keeping a process. In. I think there's many people are have home businesses now. And we know people, many people have home businesses. But if they're under the radar, once you open it up, it's just going to be, I think it's going to be more than you, you bargained for. That's what I think. And, and also, I wonder if there's any other place, what I tried to look up, if there's any other place that has done the zoning that you guys are going to do in sort of a similar town. And I, all I got when I Googled was Houston, Texas, but I know it's going to be um, other, because they, you know, they sort of do it all in right with. Yeah, that was only Houston. <laughs> yes. Well, that's what, some, that's what, that's, right, that's what some guy told you me. Turn your house into a bar. So, and, uh, right. That's what, and, and I guess the whole idea about it is, 
What's that? Or church. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what another zoning person said. There's like no zoning in, in Houston. Um, so it's not a good comparison for any place. But, um, but so again, like allowing it to happen, they don't want to say, no, you can't do this. But still having some process still allows some, you know, some way to kind of regulate it. So it's so neighbors don't feel like after the fact, then the counting of the cars and this and that. And it's just, I just think that you might regret it. But that's my thought. Okay? Thank you. Thanks for listening. I don't have a lot to say. I'm Barbara Weiner Dubeck, and I live on Massasoit Street as well. And I'm opposed to taking away the permitting process for all the reasons that Eileen just mentioned, for the things that you said, Marilyn. And the one thing I want to say is that seasonally, when there's an accumulation of snow, as we had last winter, if you put more traffic into the mix on a street like my street, but I know that Crescent is worse, and over on South Street, um, so many of the streets, um, the small streets, it, it could be difficult. And if you get just one or two people on a small street deciding to have a home business, um, I know the last thing in the world I would want to do is complain about my neighbor. I would never, ever want to be put in a position to count cars and then to go and have to say, I'm sorry, so-and-so living next door to me, but I'm going to go and report that you have 20 cars a day and not five. It just would be a terrible environment and climate for us to have here in the city. Thank you. Just a quick question, both from Massasoit. I'm on the Transportation and Parking Commission, and your oh. Lou's application comes before us on Tuesday. Oh, okay. Um, but I will say we've been measuring the speed of the traffic there, and it's coming in surprisingly calm. Really? 30, 30, 30 miles an hour at the 85th percentile. So I don't see that as being... I, I don't want to speak for the whole commission, but I, 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 we, were, we were surprised. It was up for a week, wasn't it? It was. And right we waited in front of my house, school, actually. We waited until school started before we you know, took, put it up so that it would be pretty close to what we deal with. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that was one week. Kind <laughs> of shocking because people are excited all the time. Yeah. Um, well, I'd also like to, to say why couldn't we make the special permit process easier and cheaper, but keep the process? And I don't know if we have, if we can do that, but I guess that's an ordinance. Well, I mean, yeah, there's a cost to everything, you know. So the reason why the permit process is two hundred dollars is there's, you know. You know, at some point, <laughs> the, I don't think the city's turning a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess so. so uh, but, right. but in terms of the, and also the time, it's yeah. a statutory requirement. If you have social permit, it you have to advertise it. You have to notify yeah. the abiders. You have to have a um, you know an appeal period. So, in Northampton, the process is very much condensed to the point that it, you know, in most communities, it doesn't take two and a half to three months to get a permit, it takes six months, nine months, 12 months. I mean, the state was issuing incentives for cities to try to approve permits in six months or less. It's like, well, yeah, sure, we can apply for that money because yeah. we yeah. never take six months to approve permits. Three. I forgot what it was. <laughs> um, oh. Just a point of clarification, though, it would be Louie who would be going out counting cars, right? Yeah, but if they thought there were too many cars on your street, you wouldn't be the person confronting the business owner. But, but we do, I mean, the whole city um, system, and we don't go, the, the city, the building department doesn't go out looking for violations. Right. People call and complain, right. and then there's a follow-up. So yeah. I think that's, you know, the and issue. Check out Island Road if you want right. to right. know a nightmare of neighbors and counting cars. And right. Mark? <laughs> Yeah, Todd, I was going to say, if you if you don't see any customers, do you do we do they have to register with home business? So all these people that are flying on the radar now, which we know, you know, at four special permits a year, we know that ninety nine percent of the home businesses in Hamburg 
under the radar. Or so if they may not be same clients. You might have a home business where you don't say, or if you, all the music teachers out there who don't have a special know, know. Well, I'm saying, should we, should we? Oh, yeah. Okay, so start calling the building. <laughs> well, I was saying my next door neighbor who taught music to my daughter for years. She had clients all the time, and I know she didn't read that. So. I was just saying, should we advocate some that you, it's still allowed by right, but you have to register. Just so we know that there's a home business or four home businesses on the street or whatever. Well, this provision is to register with the building department to say, okay, I want to register my home business and I'm anticipating having two people a day. Or well, I'm saying for those people who don't, who don't have oh. clients. I mean, do we, is there any need to? No, we, had, we started, that was the very first baby step. We said, if you want to have a home business, not that you even see anybody, but you have to file with the building department. We got rid of that. And so the people who aren't seeing anybody, they don't have to come. Do they need a business license? No, not necessarily. It depends on what kind of business they're doing. If they're not really conducting, you know, some people are writing yes. stuff internationally. Good telemarketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They, right. They, they don't write books. Virtually. Virtually. <laughs> <laughs> you turn the home business to your house and so on, nobody who would know. Who would care? I mean, I know, a, I know a lawyer that practices out of her house, but she doesn't see clients right. in her house. There are lots of people who do that. That's right. Yeah. So this whole thing always comes down to traffic. Every discussion yeah. we've ever had about it. Mm -hmm. Well, about traffic. There's a, it's so frustrating to sit on TPC and hear these very complaints come in week after week and we really can't, I mean, the, the ability to fix them is expensive. I mean, you know, we, we know how to fix them, but the city doesn't have the ability to, you know, street narrowing and... and well, the other thing, though, is say, say my next door neighbor started home business and started seeing people. Started what? Started seeing, seeing clients. Yeah. So I'd have to rat them out. Just I would have to call the building inspector and have them, just like we would have to do here. There's, not there's really no difference. Is this a hypothetical? It's a hypothetical. Oh, okay. My next door neighbor is not running here. <laughs> 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 um, but piano, teaching piano. I moved. You moved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she ran you off. She ran me off. All that noise. <laughs> so, um, no, the, um, no. So right. So if this is important, if we're worried about enforcement, if we're worried about neighbors having to call out neighbors, that's exactly where we are today. If somebody opens a home business today and starts seeing people, neighbors have to call the building inspector. If we enact this, you have a home business, you see less than five, or fewer than five cars a day. Same thing. If the neighbor thinks there's more, the neighbors are going to have to make the phone call. There's, I don't see that big a difference. Okay. That's what I'm, I mean, right now, if if Mrs. Smith next door, all of a sudden, one or two cars are there a day, and you're like, hey, what's going on in Mrs. Smith's house? She has a business. Like you say, you call in and say, they're not registered, are they registered, or whatever. But now, instead of one or two cars, we're talking about five, which to me, over the course of a you know, 10-hour day, I, I just don't, I don't see the impact if, if, we're, if we have four special permits a year over the whole city. I, I just don't see... Well, there may not be an impact on some streets, but if you say say you live in a neighborhood where there's only parking, uh, say you only have a driveway that one car fits in, and your you know your second car is has to park on the street, and then people come in and take that spot. I mean that's what happens on a street like Graves. So, but, on the, but on the other side, though, I mean it's just look at it from the other side. Actually, when people come in for special permits. Often the issue is if you live in more of an in-town area, it's less visible because there's activity anyway in the neighborhood. Whereas if you're out in the suburbs, out on the streets, out west of Florence Road, people might notice more of that activity more, even though the streets are you know, wider and, and can accommodate the cars. So there's that side of it. But the other piece of it, too, is people go leave their house for work, typically. That's sort of the traditional uh, work environment. So in a neighborhood, most people are leaving to go somewhere else during the day. So that would be the time in which clients would be coming to that home business. So in terms of you know, buying for parking spaces, it may be offset at different times. It, unless you live in a neighborhood where people park there and walk into town to work because it's free parking, like they do in, in Ward 3. Free Street. Fruit Street, yeah. Fruit so it depends on the neighborhood. You wouldn't have a, you wouldn't open, it would be stupid to open a business right. someplace like that. Because they'd say, I, I hate going to the office. Oh, sorry, Janice. Sorry, Janice. We're reopening a 
conversation we had two weeks ago when we voted. We're having the same conversation. Well, that's what I said. So that's why we're, so we're back to we do nothing. We've already voted, and this is moving on to city council. So we do nothing tonight that is already in the pipeline of the city council. And we're getting more to vote. With the old numbers. With, right. with the 42 vote, with whatever you guys, uh, whatever the decision was two weeks ago. Which uh, was like, how many, 25 cars? Well, it was based on vehicle trips, and the idea behind that really was that maybe if people are walking to go to their homes to to see somebody, then right. it's not as much an impact. So you might have eight visitors instead of the seven vehicle trips. Right. So the modification to the one from two weeks ago is five per day, no employees. Uh, otherwise, you need special permit. For Andy and Maryland, I think you guys are still saying no trips per day, which is pretty much the way it is today. And we get none of these. We, we have no, nobody's applied for permits. One of them I'm really sad. I have. Um, but, um, so, we do nothing. We've already moved forward to City Council. We accept this one the way it's written, with the modifications. We modify what Carolyn has written. We have to confirm this today. I think those are our three options. So, can we continue it? Uh, no, we're going to decide this one tonight. I move. That we sponsor a um, home business. What is this language written on? Home business. Um, what's it called? Regulating amendment. Amendment that reflects the changes presented to us by Carolyn this evening. Is there a second? Second. Right. Is this one where we have to close the public hearing? There's no public hearing. It's no, it's discussion. It's all closed. Oh, it's time you tried to. It's the second time you did that. <laughs> I know. Did what? Did something. Just wanted to say something. Sorry, did you do one more comment? I just said I called Louie to ask how many he gets a, a, a month. And he said one, sometimes more a month for a special permit. I just wanted to throw oh. I, I don't know. I just asked Louie today, but that's it. I also, I also wanted to say that in the uh, Gazette editorial about this a couple weeks ago, it says 7 a.m. to 8 p.m which would not be just the average nine to five day. It would extend into the evening hours. Can't hear you. It would extend into the evening hours, 7 a.m. Mm. to 8 p.m. Right. is what was recommended. Right. That's what it's um, So a motion and a second on approval of what we have today. Sorry. Who's the second? Mark. Uh -huh. Mark. Yeah. So, you can vote on this. If you vote it in favor, it replaces the one that we moved ahead two weeks ago. If we, go, if we vote against this, then the one that's currently in the pipeline continues on. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So all in favor? Five. All opposed? Two. All right. So motion passes five to two. So this one will replace the one that's currently on. Okay. And just so for the audience, this means yeah. all we're doing is referring to city council. Right. City council will now do what they want to do with it, which is nothing. They can refer it back out to their ordinance property or ordinance uh, subcommittee. Right. Um, they can, uh, which place we'll have a joint here with them again. So this is just this is a whole. All we've done is put this in the city council's hands to figure out what they want to do. Okay. So. And when will that be coming to city council? Well, it'd probably get referred out to the new city council, so which means that's not going to get going until February, I would say. So you're not going to see a public hearing probably until February, March. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 All right. Last but not least. Chickens. More chickens. <laughs> More chickens. <laughs> Do you want to stay for chickens? Yeah. For chickens are okay. I will say we're probably Chickens are okay, no card. Um, all righty. So you all discussed this at the last meeting. Um, Carolyn, do you want to summarize the changes you've made since the last? Chickens. <laughs> you guys don't want to be talking about this for months. Well, can you just give us years. some history, maybe? That's the piece we're missing. Why did the ZRC decide this was the important thing to bring forward? Do you remember? This is the Because at our second meeting, Lily Lombard, from Food Northampton, came and wanted to talk about urban agriculture. And that's why. Uh, and it, I mean, the ZRC, we did, we thought this was going to be, we really thought this was going to be 
low hanging fruit. I mean, we're going to do this, and it's been three years, and it's, and it's not been it's been the, it's been as hard or harder than the whole business. King well, it's just very nothing. interesting because we where are the advocates? There, we have only had people come in opposition to it. I mean, the last meeting we had, they met a lot. The ZRC met a lot with this was. Well, you got email advocates. Uh, right. And this was written in favor with the, with the uh, Lily and Grow Food, and there's, the, the, there's another chicken um, group. I knew Valley Backyard Chicken Thank you. Oh, wow. So they were all involved Can early we on. see it? So, no, there was a lot. But again, since this has been going on actually longer than King Street. So, uh, that's a little bit Longer than King Street from 2002? Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's the egg we're not sure about. So, so um, easy to be driving. That's Fine. right. Hold on a second. <laughs> exactly. It's 900. It's 900. They don't want them opening home businesses. So how much do we re really need to revisit at this point? I mean, well, so one way that Carolyn uh, summarized the So clearly, I think it was determined that 12 is too many. So what's in front of you? And then the other issue was, um, you know, by having the setbacks to a um, residential structure, be 20 feet, that would preclude all the people who currently have the three chicken allowance. So this language is, drops it to six, with some of the, keeping some of the other provisions, and either change the setback to residential structures down to 10 feet, which cuts it in half, um, which probably could be, could accommodate any site in the city, or just eliminate the setback um, provision for coops and just keep it silent the way it is today. So that's those are the two Stephen is crazy calculating how many days. I'm gonna surprise you all because I was a real advocate for this when we last talked about it. I had but um I I the experience of having them makes me think that six is plenty for a for a household. They're dirty little birds. <laughs> <laughs> So with that in mind, do you, mm -hmm. the changing from 20 feet to 10 feet, do you think that's an issue for the dirty little bit? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As you are now calling them. <laughs> well, I guess I am a little concerned that it would, it would preclude a lot of places that have chicken right now. The 20 feet or also the 10 feet? And no, I don't mean 10 feet. If you, if you don't have more than 10 feet, you really don't need to have them. I would leave out C completely. I guess they raise them on decks in New York City or something. We used to have to clean up after them all the time, and if you're willing to do that in the bedding, and that's more than weekly, if you really are not wanting any smell. So it, that, it's that kind of dedication that I think hobbyists don't. And so what happens to this waste that goes in the landfill? You have, it, I think it probably says you here you have to handle it on site, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. For a while. But the, ultimately, where does it go? Landfill. So you, it's a conservation area. Yeah. You feel that the four foot, ten foot new parameters would not preclude virtually anyone. I mean, because that was my concern. It just feels like that's really unfair to people who are currently completely within zoning, all of a sudden be eliminated. And I'm just. Well, I think ten feet because most houses are ten feet from each other. Right. So if you imagine putting your coop right behind your back door. Mm -hmm. You're probably still going to be at least 10 feet mm -hmm. from another house. I mean, it doesn't make, you know, we're split in the office. Wayne and I are arguing about chickens every day. It's just a mess. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But his, his, he's of the opinion that don't make any other changes, just increase it to six. End of story. Yeah. Don't even add A, B, C, B, and E. Just yeah. move the number to six. And don't have anything about setbacks. But Keeping in the spirit of the ZRC recommendation, seeing that we didn't really, there's nothing really, it seems, um, disdainful about A, B, D, and E, that those could potentially be kept, and mm -hmm. and, and just the coop setback is just sort of the last remaining item for discussion. I think yeah. if six makes sense. To I think us. we need to. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, remember, I, I had 
had spoken with the Amherst Animal Control Officer, and she said she didn't have any trouble at all, but they go out and inspect each coop when, when they license it. So, I mean, I think if, and so she's providing that guidance if, if, they, if it's an inappropriate place for the, the, it's the coop and the run. I mean, if you've an outside. Have, have we thought about the um, number of chickens at, in relationship to square feet that each chicken needs? Oh, no, no, no. Right. <laughs> yes, there was a, there was a recommendation, and apparently there is someone has calculated that best practices say X number of feet per blah blah blah. There's no way you're going to count. I mean, it's a nightmare thing to think about enforcing. No, you have you're one foot shy of your. And you know maybe in five years someone's going to say no, you need five more square feet per bird. Or less birds than yeah. I just think that makes it way too complicated. <laughs> and you know the other argument is we don't do any of this stuff for any other animal in the city. We don't do this for dogs, we don't do this for people can have whatever number of dogs they want in the city. We don't tell them where you put your dog house. We don't tell them how to how to walk your dog, how to clean you know, we tell them how to clean up at your Well they they do if there's a board of health there could be a board of health issue with lots of dogs who cats in the house. Right, but the yeah. same would apply and saying we don't legislate it into zoning right, right, and say you right. can only have um, two dogs or you're not walking your dog enough last week, so, you know. So the yeah. only difference is oh, four instead or six instead of four. Right. right. Oh, well, I, don't, I'm, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with slaughtering your own chicken at home. So <laughs> this number E, why is that? Well, all, well actually, Captain. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there are board of health issues around yeah. water. I, mean, I I just have. Is it? I propose that we get rid of C, but if you keep C, there's a typo in the second line where 10 feet, it should be 10 feet from an existing residential structure. And C. I disagree. Oh, you disagree with west. two or from or grammatical? No you disagree coop. with getting rid of seeds? No coop may be sighted closer than 10 feet from an existing residential structure. Sounds better. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I... What were you just disagreeing with? Could that mean your structure? Doesn't matter. Could that mean my house? If, I, if it were my coop? Oh, the no, on an abutting parcel. 10 feet from the... I mean, the thing about it is this was um, brought forward by pro-chicken people, and it just seems bizarre to me that it could have the effect of possibly eliminating the chickens for people who currently have them. Unless so they're grandfathers. <laughs> but they're only grandmothers. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. I mean, no, I, don't, I don't know why that they would make it more restrictive. Right now, hold on a second. Today. Today. Okay. Take sense. charge, Steve. But, yeah, let's, let's, so we have, I think we have three things we have to decide on. One is, the first one is, everybody okay going from 12 to 6? That seems like there's pretty general yes. consensus on yeah. 12 to 6. Brandy? You okay. okay. 6. Or none. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing is, as Carolyn mentioned, we don't have these kind of restrictions, A, B, C, D, and E, on any other animal. Do people think we need some kind of restriction on chickens? Because if so, I think these are good guidelines. I would actually even leave in C. But um, with the four feet and ten feet, uh, so I think that's the, the thing. So, Mark, I, I agree with everything as written, with with C included. Mm -hmm. I like that it went from twenty to ten feet, but I think you need something. And I think the whole reason we've been talking for a year and a half about chickens is they're not like dogs or cats and so forth. And so having these regulations, they are kind of specific and do present potential hazards that dogs and cats don't. And, and A through E, you know, they're pretty innocuous. They're not... They're what you want to do. Right, right. They're common sense, I think. So I don't see them as being an issue. So I'm in favor of, of all the changes that have shown. Anybody? Fred? I, I still have a question about... Somebody suggested to me that what about accessory apartments? Do they... Mm. Somebody asked that last time. Yeah, accessory like apartment condos or even yeah. apartment buildings. Yeah. That oh. Well, I think so. um, this was didn't uh, there was a discussion about saying on a per parcel basis. Right. Uh, 
page two, Robert Moore and spoke against location. Can't you put a 90 degree period? What page? Two. Page two, yeah. uh, third paragraph from the bottom. Robert Moore says, can't you put a 90 degree? That's oh. what it says. I, I don't have a suggested correction for that. And then on yeah, I page two of June 23rd, it says increase minimum height from 55 to 65. Should that be maximum height? Yes. <laughs> that one, Captain, actually is substantive correction. That's it. Substantive. I, I would like to say, <laughs> if I may have the floor, uh, I would love to see the minutes at the next meeting instead of having four and a half months with the minutes to go over because I can't remember enough to correct all the actions we're taking. And if you, get, if you do one after every meeting, it's not any more than if you do them all at once. I think on August 11th, can we change the word chicken to dirty little bird? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a dance called dirty little bird?